Hi guys, what's up? This video is going to be about my life in Australia and what advice can you take from my experience here, my traveling experience, and how easy it is to travel in Australia, to get a job in Australia, all this kind of stuff. The visa that you might need, maybe it will help you out in actually moving to Australia or just coming as a tourist. Either way, so let's start with first things first. Uh, I was in Vietnam teaching English before coming to Australia, but my plan for this year had always been to move to Australia for a year through the work and holiday visa. So basically that's a visa that allows people from many countries around the world to come work and travel in Australia for a period of one year. To get all the information you need in order to apply for this visa, make sure you visit the official website from the Australian government that ends with gov.au. It's very self-explanatory and it includes a guide on how to apply for the first, second and third year visas. So in my case, being a citizen of Portugal, I have the visa 462 with a few restrictions when it comes to the type of work you can do if you want to get the second year visa. I'll be able to work in hospitality, farms and a few other specific jobs but only in the north uh, of the Tropic of Cancer for three months. If I don't care about the second year visa, I can literally work in any industry, anytime, all over Australia, no restrictions. I started my trip in Cairns in North Queensland, in the tropical part of Australia. Here's the thing, Cairns is a lovely, lovely town. It's very small, so if you're a person who likes big cities and you're coming to Australia, you know, thinking that it's gonna be like being in Sydney. Nah, forget about that. Cairns is really small, it's like a village for what I'm used to, but you've got everything at hand. You can walk to the beach, which is not really a beach, it's a lagoon, they call it a lagoon. It's like a swimming pool, but you can go there for free. Because in Cairns, actually, you cannot swim in the ocean. That's another important factor you need to take into account. There are crocodiles, sharks, jellyfish that are very, very uh, fatal, and they can kill you in a matter of minutes. Since it was such a small town, you'd see the same faces over and over again. So it was really easy to make friends. Yeah, I really recommend Cairns if you want to start your journey in Australia in the tropical areas, especially if it's winter over here and you don't want to deal with the cold weather of the south. Over there, I got a job as a travel agent. I was selling trips to the Great Barrier Reef, to the Daintree Rainforest, the oldest rainforest in the world, amongst many other things. It was a fun job, it was exciting, it was in my industry, my industry has always been the travel industry, but it was a job that would potentially mean I would have to settle long term in Cairns. And I really wanted to see Australia, I wasn't ready to settle, so I decided to quit that job and move on to the next chapter of my life in Australia, the Australian Outback. So after spending a couple of weeks in this hostel in the centre of Cairns, I made my little group of friends, and one of those friends actually found a job in the middle of Australia on a cattle station. And that job involved building fences for the cows. At first we thought, yeah, sure, the money is good, we've never done this before, let's give it a try. We didn't pay for accommodation, we didn't pay for food, there was no travel needs from our pockets. I was really able to save a lot of money. I was working about 10 hours a day. Uh, I was getting paid a daily rate instead of an hourly rate. That meant that regardless of the number of hours I was working, I was always getting paid the same per day. So yeah, even though it was good money, it was a bit unfair. The conditions were not the best in our accommodation that we got for free anyway. But still, you know, all these things add up and then eventually I got really tired of building the fences under the 43 degree heat in the Australian desert. What the hell? Because the job on the farm was so heavy, it was so physical and hard work. Actually collecting the rubbish and taking it to the dump was my favorite job. And in the end, if my job for one day was collecting rubbish all over the farm, I was so happy with that. So this type of work, like farm work, hospitality and fishing, they count for those 88 days that you need to work in remote areas in order to get the second year visa if you are interested in staying longer than one year in Australia. But anyway, there are plenty of other ways uh, to stay in Australia, you don't have to do this way. It's just that this is one of the easiest ways, let's say, to stay in Australia longer than the 12 months of your work and holiday visa. So many people that I met in Southeast Asia when I was traveling, they sold me kind of a wrong idea of Australia. It's not that easy to find work. You need to fight for it. You need to really like look hard for it. And actually, it's pretty easy for them to fire you anytime. But anyway, there are plenty of jobs over here, lots of good experiences to live. And yeah, I'm really happy for that. So eventually, my friend and I, we got really exhausted. So we quit. They dropped us at the nearest roadhouse, which was about three hours away from the cattle farm. Then from there we hitchhiked 
to another intersection, a T-junction, where we then got a bus to Alice Springs. To move around the country by bus, it's super, super expensive. For example, my bus journey from Cairns to the cattle station cost me around 400 Australian dollars. That's like 230 pounds or maybe 270 euros, roughly. If you think, okay, I was on a bus for 25 hours, fair enough. That, you know, should be pricey in a way. The best thing to have in Australia is a car. If you can afford a car, try to buy one because when you have a car you can actually go to so many more places. In terms of spending money, you'll end up spending the same amount because you'll still have a lot of expenses, especially when it comes to fuel. But not only that, like maintenance of the car, you still have to pay the entrances to all the national parks. But yeah, definitely try to buy a car and if you come with money uh, to Australia, ready to buy one from your first day, yeah, just do it. It's my best advice. From Ali Springs, very small town again, we got a couple of jobs there, like casual work again, and then we worked for a resort in the middle of the desert, Kings Canyon Resort. It's a really, really nice place to visit as a tourist. Over there we did all sorts of jobs. We were all-rounders, so wherever we were needed, we would help. So that was a really interesting job. We were saving heaps of money again. In terms of the cost of living, it all depends where you are living in Australia. When I was living in Cairns, my daily budget was about $45 and that included my accommodation in a hostel and three meals a day. But this will not be the case when you move into one of the big cities like Sydney or Melbourne. The expenses will be much higher there. When I first moved to Sydney, this city came across as very expensive. But then, once you start earning an Australian wage and you know where all the best and cheap eats are, then things actually balance out. Rent will be your main expense. Rooms tend to be cheaper the further away you go from the city and from the main beaches in the eastern side of Sydney. But if you go closer to the eastern suburbs, prices really skyrocket. You should expect to pay between $200 in the outer suburbs, which are further from the city and the beaches, and up to $500 or more for a room in the iconic eastern suburbs where Bondi Beach is located. And these are weekly prices, that's how it works in Australia. Food in Australia, um, well, I, I, I cannot find a word to describe it. They've got a lot of healthy stuff. So if you come to Sydney or Melbourne, you'll be able to eat a lot of foods from all over the world, especially Asian, Italian, Greek, Turkish, uh, the Portuguese chicken. But then if you are in the remote areas like the Northern Territory, all I could eat was sausage rolls and beef pies. So it really depends. So they've got lots of healthy foods, but on the other hand, they also have plenty of junk food for you to try, so if you like both, yeah, come to Australia. You will also be able to try what I consider the Australian national dish, avocado on toast. Regarding the people of Australia and how welcome I feel, I feel really welcome here actually, uh, more than what I expected, and they ask where we're from, what language we speak, why do we come here, you know, all these sort of questions, and it's it's really nice to, to have people that are local. Uh, actually interested in our story. Well, that's it guys. Uh, this has been my experience so far in Australia. If you have any questions after this video, you can drop a comment below and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. I'm gonna add some links below as well for you to access information on the work and holiday visa or any other stuff that you may need that I think you'll find useful. That's it for now and see you next time.